Whoa. Hmm. Hmm. Like, I don't, I don't know... <laughs> I don't know what I'm missing here, that nobody wants to play a tank with 4100 DPM and 50% camo. The K91 is the Soviet tier 10 medium tank, uh, not the 430U, not the uh, 140. Um, it's kind of like the misfit child of the Soviet mediums. Uh, you can see that like the 430U gets played you know, 97,000 times over the last 60 days at a 49% win rate. The 140 gets played 121,000 times over the last 60 days, and the K91 gets played 30,000. It just goes unnoticed, kind of. And I think that the lack of player base kind of comes down to the less forgiving armor. But god, is this tank kind of scary when you start seeing what it can do when you stack crew skill with equipment, with field mods. Like, this tank gets crazy. I mean, looking at it to start, you can see the DPM is super good, and that doesn't really tell the whole story because the alpha damage is 320, right? So you're not trading like the 430U can or something, I don't know, like the Chinese mediums. Like, you don't have a ton of alpha out of a medium tank. 320 is actually almost bottom of the class, I think. Um, but the reload time on this tank is so comical that it actually can just perma-track everything. I mean, a six-second reload stock is one of the fastest reloads on a 100mm gun in the game. I think it is the fastest reload on a 100mm gun in the game. Um, and then you start scaling it up, but let's get to that later. First, for the comparison, it's kind of a weird one. I can't think of anything else to compare this tank to other than the STB, I suppose. Um, and that puts it in a strange spot. We can see that the STB doesn't trade very well, but the K91 actually falls behind it. Um, even more so in the alpha damage department, but the DPM is just comical on this tank. 3,178 stock is ridiculous. Um, you get to the rate of fire, obviously the K91 shooting a whole round per minute faster almost. Um, it's only a hundred millimeter round, but the shell velocity is ridiculous. You are actually just pointing and clicking in this tank. It, it doesn't matter where you aim on a tank, even if it's moving, like it's going straight at it and hitting. It, it doesn't give a shit. 50 rounds at 320 alpha is like a little slim on this tank. Ammunition is a kind of a difficult thing to work through on this. Then we get to the gun handling and it's just ridiculous. 1.6 seconds aim time, 0.32 dispersion. Um, the dispersion values on the move aren't phenomenal, um, but it makes up for it with the turret traverse value and you can get that down with crew skill and the field mod, so it's not too much of an issue. Good enough gun depression. It doesn't have like the the pneumatic suspension that the SCB does, but like it's it's good enough. Nine degrees over the sides of the tank is pretty good. Onto the mobility, it's fast. It's not like a CS sixty three, but it's quick for sure. Like fifty five kilometers an hour uh, top speed with a pretty powerful engine. Like nothing wrong here whatsoever. Like this this works fine. Armor and health. This is misleading. Um, this tank's paper, right? Like one hundred forty on the hull. You're saying, oh okay, maybe it's well angled. It'll work. No, no. Um, 220 on the turret, maybe it's well angled, it'll work. No, this this tank's certainly made out of paper. Um, like, auto-aim, no, nobody's gonna shoot over here. Don't be fooled. Nobody's gonna be like, oh, let me shoot at this. Let me shoot at the super well-angled side of the tank when there's this big flat part right here that I can just slam anything into. And God forbid somebody starts shooting heat at you. I mean, it's like, you're literally a big green health point pool. Um, it doesn't matter. Your upper upper plate isn't well angled at all. It doesn't matter. Like there's not like any sort of ricochet angle here that helps you out. Um, everybody's gonna hit this shot every time. You, like you might pull off a lucky bounce once in a while, but don't don't bank on it. Low HP uh, compared to the rest of the class, kind of 1950 isn't very good. But you're per trying not to stay at the front of the conflict in this tank for sure. Whoa. Hmm. Hmm. Now you, now you see something pretty interesting here. This tank's packing almost 18% stationary camo stock. Um, that's a stupid figure with 410 meters view range. That is an idiotic figure. Like, don't, don't just let yourself think, oh, this tank has good camo. Like, that is one of the dumbest numbers on medium tanks that this game has to offer. Um... That stacks with crew skill unlike anything else. Like, 4% camo stock is humongous. Like, this tank is a sniper. Don't, don't get it twisted. 
So now getting back to this on tanks GG, let's uh, let's start like experimenting a little bit with equipment loadouts here. If you want to really slam DPM, I'm not going to blame you. I think throwing vents there, throwing like the gun rammer here, uh, good idea. And then, you know, if you get your field mods out, you can throw like a scouting slot there and do whatever you want, particularly uh, fucking concealment, thousand percent. Um... But, like, already, I mean, we're not even into, like, crew skill or anything, and Jesus Christ, uh, 5.2 second reload time, like, <laughs> 3,630 DPM is, is getting ridiculous. And we're going to start seeing how this tank just totally, like, stacks itself into very a very particular role here. Um, I mean, if you want to get into the, like, incentive um, and directive uh, kind of category, you can just start getting ridiculous with what you can do, um, throw on a premium consumable, throw on Brothers in Arms, Camo, Concealment, Recon, and Situational Awareness, um, so some decent cr crew skills here, uh, yeah, that's dumb, that's really stupid, that's ridiculous, um, that's stupid, I mean, that's not even with the field mod that does extra concealment, which you're going to take. Um, and you're going to take, you know, accuracy, you're going to take reload time here, you're going to take, uh, you know, aiming speed probably. You don't really need that extra engine power. It doesn't make that much of a difference. Um, and you're going to take uh, ground resistances. Um, and, oh my god, I mean, 50% stationary camo... Uh, uh, like a tank with max uh, max view range, like 450 meters base view range, or 450 meters view range, is not going to spot you until they are 225 meters away. That is stupid. That's dumb. Um, you can, and, and plus, I mean, we're not running optics here. We're pulling 475 meters view range. You're not spotting anything in this tank if you're stationary. Even if you're moving, you have 41% camo. That's so dumb. Like, I don't, I don't know... <laughs> I don't know what I'm missing here that nobody wants to play a tank with 4,100 DPM and 50% camo, 10% um, after firing. So, so you can totally, you know, with heavy tanks, like you can spot them and fire at them at the same time without getting spotted. 10% stationary camo after a shot, super serviceable. Um, I mean, this, this tank can get pretty dumb. I mean, you want to look at the, like, gun handling values here. We just threw on Smooth Ride and Snapshot, and the turret traverse goes down to 0.9. The moving factor uh, goes down to 13, uh, 0.13. And you have a 1.5 second aim time with a 4.6 second reload. Oh, what? I don't even, I don't even, like, this. these numbers, I, I, they just don't even, like, check to me right now. So here we are with Moltres Fire. Great username. Uh, I mean, big Pokemon guy here myself, so I, I love seeing that out of some World of Tanks players. And he's here on Pilsen. Um, he's taking the K91 out, uh, looking like with some form of firepower loadout. I can't tell if he could uh, comment and tell us what he's using. That'd be great. But he's taking it out into Pilsen, and it really just exemplifies what makes this tank so just raw. You're going to see he's going to start out AFK. The title of the replay is K91. Uh, shaky start, but good recovery. So let's see if he can make that actually come true. Uh, Moltres Fire is a great player from the North American server, and he's here on his K91. We can see that he's taking a, a camouflage loadout here. Um, he's got camo paint on his tank. I assume he's taking camo on his crew. Maybe the, uh, maybe the uh, exhaust equipment. Um, just to try and maximize that camo. Would appear that he's taking vertical stabilizers here. Uh, his gun handling looks very, very good. Um, so let's see how this works out. He's going to take what seems like a far back sniping position here on the west or on the southern flank. Before evidently changing his mind. It'll be interesting to see him get a little aggressive here. It doesn't look like he's taking a turbo from that top speed, but we'll see. Boy, does he get a surprise here with the WZ-114 straight in front of him, hitting for, for 600 and a broken turret. But this is where we're going to be able to see some strong suits of this tank. The just voracious reload of this tank is going to allow him 
to uh, be able to really handle multiple tanks at once um, if he can get himself turned around to face that leopard. 37 hit points to start this game, looking like a really brutal uh, a game in and of itself. Gets a lucky bounce, and that nice reload is going to allow him to shut down the leopard. Now sitting on 29 hit points, he's got work to do against the uh, WZ-114. Probably going to want to load heat here if I were him. And oof, that artillery is just looking dangerous right now. His T-49 is coming to help him out. Um, presumably with the small gun, let's see. Actually, 685 to the charm will be maybe packing the large gun. No, he's, he is packing the small gun. Um, and thankfully, uh, Moltrish Fire's teammates are coming to the rescue here. Now, it looks like they are at a disadvantage in the uh, northern flank here as Moltrish Fire shuts down the WZ-114. The northern flank looks like they're at a disadvantage. They have no control over the A-line. Um, which would result in them losing the C line as well if any tanks were to come uh, across A line and start taking shots over into the Object 277, the Minotauro. That'd be really bad news for his team. So Moltres Fire is going to start looking at that Emule 1 over there and just pounding it with the perfect accuracy that this tank has in the wonderful reload time. One thing I love about Moltres Fire is he's really not. Uh, dipping into the heat rounds yet. You know, he hasn't fired one heat round yet. He doesn't take a bunch in this tank. Um, he's making the those phenomenal APCR rounds work with the great shell velocity. Tough bounce on the 60 TP. Probably gonna, yep, perfect. He's gonna load heat here and uh, not switch out for the MEL2. Probably smart. You're gonna want to get the DPM to work here. You'd hate to, you know, miss a shot because you're Switching to APCR and just look at that reload time. Ridiculous lighting on fire, the ML2 for the finish, uh, finishing shot. Sitting on 3.3k combined now, he's just absolutely carving this enemy team up from 29 HP. You can see, however, though, that... Like we expected from that hilltop, his uh, WZ-111 GFT has already fallen. Um, excuse me, his Conqueror has fallen to the WZ. A full health T-110 E3 and Jagdpanzer E-100 means that this flank has more or less halted for uh, Moltres Fire's team. Let's see if he can get up and do anything about that. This tank has... Uh, you know, up against a couple of beasts like this, this tank's pretty well suited. It's got phenomenal standard pen at 276 millimeters, and uh, and pretty serviceable heat pen. 330 millimeters of heat pen is is pretty full blooded for a for a medium tank like this. And you know, sitting stationary here, Moltres Fire is going to be pushing about 47 percent camo right now, so he he can do this pretty comfortably uh, and and outspot the T110 E3 in the corner for sure if he were to take a shot. Just great safe gameplay right now from uh, Moltres Fire. He knows that in order for his team to win at a 4k HP disadvantage, you got to be able to keep your gun in the game as long as possible, especially tanks with camo like this. The longer you can keep your gun in the game, the better it's going to be. Tense game now, one tank game as his team's at a huge HP disadvantage. He's got to watch out for that artillery as he has a one-shot for him. Tight game now. 6-6. Six, six. Huge HP gap to recover from. That premium consumable is really allowing Moltres Fire to push out some phenomenal view range. We're, we're looking at something along the lines of 470 meters here, which means that if any TDs shoot from cover here, they're going to probably get lit up by Moltres Fire. And if these, this Emil 2, the Jagdpanzer 100, the E3 try pushing along the camouflage here, it's not going to go well for them against this camo rating. Playing a little bumper cars with the brick wall, nothing wrong with that. Now, with his Minotauro, his Conway, and his 277 North, it would appear that they're in a pretty decent spot. But I have to think with the Emil 2 relocating over to 
uh, what I would imagine is uh, this northern hill here to try and use his phenomenal turret and gun depression on the Minotauro. I'd have to think that Minotauro's in trouble right now. Um, the 277 falls to the Jagdpanzer E100, which means he is, uh, he's probably at this position right here in some bushes taking shots over to the 277. Um, it, it, it's not so much of a problem for Moltres Fire because of just the sheer amount of spotting capability this tank has. Sitting on three kills now, he's done 50% of his team's total knockouts, um, and presumably, you know, a large chunk of their damage here, as his team is at a 6,000 HP disadvantage. He's now pushing into spot uh, the northern flank for his Minotaur, and it just showcases the, uh, the versatility of this tank. You know, 55 kilometers an hour goes a long way when you bring this much camo and spotting capability to the battlefield. Certainly reloading some heat here. That's a smart idea out of a uh, out of Moltres fire for the turret of the 60 TP. He's gonna have a shot into the weak point or into the turret chin. Like to see him push up into this bush here if he can, and uh, that would allow him to spot anything on the hilltop. If there is anything on the hilltop, he likely would have been spotted right now if there was something on the hilltop, using six cents to spot here, I think. Um, so he's pushing up pretty free. It looks like anything that was up here would have relocated by now, whether that be the uh, Alf Panzer IV or the WZ on the enemy team. Now, I would imagine the Panzer IV is going to be either here or here, firing at the Conway and the Minotauro. Um, it's looking like he's gonna have a shot lined up on the 60 TP, and just look at this. Oh boy, it doesn't get too much better than this for the, uh, for the K91. Takes the track off with that phenomenal accuracy, and he's just gonna go to town right now. That 60 TP has absolutely no chance. Using APCR rounds here, smart to go through the track and the tank. Sitting on 69 HP right now. The 60 TP and bounces the last shot but you'll notice that uh, he gets spotted here which is tough and a lucky miss out of the 60 TP means that he's sitting on a 29 HP still to wrap this matchup oof the 261 shot falls short and Moltres fire is now sitting on 2600 HP or, or excuse me uh, 4500 combined damage now now with five high explosive rounds, it'll be interesting to see what you can make happen against this Panzer IV in terms of DPM. You're kind of climbing up into like the 5,000 DPM territory against this Panzer IV if you can get some uh, HE off. Let's see if he'll push back up. I think he will. Not against the Minotaur, actually. As the Minotaur is pushing over there, it's looking like... This is a, a somewhat of a one flank um, at this point. You have the Type 5 is relocated to the other side, and the Panzer IV is going to take a shot, it would appear, at the Minotauro. Gets punished. Nice shot there by uh, Moltres Fire being ready for that. And we can see that because of the, you know, respectable turret traverse values here, he's able to snap shots on ridgelines pretty well. Now I think the correct play here would be to take out the Panzer IV and push along this one line using your camo to take out the WZ and the Emil II and the Jagdpanzer E100. And let's see if he does just that. Um, he's going to get spotted here by the Emil it looks like. I would I would think that's that was the Emil. Um, big shot comes out from the Minotaur there on the Emil and it looks like he's just got to light him back up for his teammate to uh, wrap him up and that will secure him a, a monstrous spotting advantage um, over the enemy team. Artillery knocks him out. I would think he's spotted right now. No sir. Smart smart fallback out of Moltres Fire to just make sure that he's not spotted anymore. But uh, he's going to push up into these bushes now and there should be a sizable view range advantage for him to exploit right now. But oh brother this looks like a good uh, a good shot to exploit here just pumping damage into the Jagdpanzer E100. Unfortunate non-penetration there. 
clean shot into the side of the Type 5 Heavy. And you can just see how dangerous this tank can be if anything sits out in front of it. I mean, this is about as fast as six shots can come out of a tank in this game. Moltres Fire now has a lot of heat rounds in reserve, which is going to be useful against the E3 and the uh, Jagdpanzer 100. But he really likes that shell velocity. I do too. Out of you know tanks like the Revlorisa, uh, the K91, the you know M48 Patton tanks with great shell velocity, I really like using a, uh, APCR rounds rather than the premium heat uh, on occasion at long range, just to you know really make sure shots are hitting their mark and going right where I aim them. We're now pulling up to the two two minute fifty second mark here. And Moltres Fire still has 5,000 HP to take care of on the enemy team. Let's see what he can do. I'd probably start looking for spotting opportunities if I was him right now. Um, not saying push out, but, you know, getting those bushes up there. You definitely have a sizable spotting advantage over the enemy at this point. Um, especially if they were to fire on one of your teammates. But who am I to say? He's sitting on 6,000 damage and uh, 1,100 spotting right now. 7k combined already for Moultrie's Fire. He tells his Minotaur to go. If a shot comes out from the Panzer IV, he's going to be able to outspot him. And there's only two minutes remaining, so the Minotaur should probably uh, start pushing. One shot goes into the Panzer IV, and the artillery comes in to clean it up. And you'll see that even from there, he's unspotted by the uh, Panzer IV. He's about to use his last standard round on the Panzer E100. And again, just no way he's going to get spotted, even you know within spotting distance there. The Jagdpanzer E100 is within 445 meters. And when you have 10% camo after firing, there's just no way the uh, Jagdpanzer E100 is going to be able to spot you. You can shoot comfortably there. Firing HE now at the 261. I mean, that's just a scary amount of BPM if you think about it. Still firing HE here. He's going to switch after this shot. To his heat rounds and absolutely demolish the WZ 111. Leaving his team with a 14 to 9 comfortable victory, it looks like here. Um, nothing but the T-123 to clear out in this last minute. Let's see if they can do it. He's in a tough spot to dig out. Full HP now. It's all a DPM matchup, it looks like. 43 seconds. Here comes the DPM test for, uh, for the K91. As the E3 looks to angle his armor. Oof, that's scary. And he's picking up some uh, additional assistance damage here, which is nice. As the E3 comes for the... Clearly what he thinks is the dangerous target, or at least the HP that you can mop up, as the E3 gets shut down, leaving our hero Moltres Fire on 9,500 combined damage in this awesome game on Pilsen. Hard to believe that he started this game on 29 HP, but we can see just how much you can spread out damage in this tank, dealing damage to 9 separate tanks on the enemy team, and either assisting or spotting on the remaining 3 for a total of 12 tanks affected in this game. Just a monstrous game out of uh, Moltres Fire, and only losing 12,000 credits shooting that much gold at tier 10 is, is pretty awesome out of this tank. The fact that you can shoot so much APCR is great, um, but yeah, phenomenal game here, Moltres Fire. Just an absolute carry out of you, and a great, 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 great game to exemplify how underrated this tank can be.